City of Jackson Staff Spotlight. And today, the spotlight falls on grant coordinator, Corey Mays. Hey, Corey. Hey, Bart. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, nice to see you. And uh, in your new capacity, Corey, I think it's very familiar to our viewers for his time as a DDA executive director. And you uh, moved, did you go up or down? Down. Down. Just a couple floors. Okay. New, new job. Uh, you, uh, is this what you started at after DDA? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, if I've been here just over a year, so I don't know if you can call it new anymore. I, I suppose I'm still new. That's I have a lot year. to learn. Well, it, it has been um, that long, but you've, uh, you hung on to the DDA job for a little while until they found uh, re your replacement. So what does a uh, grant coordinator do? Well, it coordinates grants. <laughs> Uh, and I mean, I, question I, answered. Yeah. So grants. Uh, so our, I, I know that the, the state, uh, there's federal. Uh, what else? Are there other places you can apply for grants? There are, yeah. So the city is fortunate enough. We're what's called an entitlement community uh, through the uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development. So we get some grants automatically every year from HUD, um, community development block grants, and some home grants. We utilize those for public infrastructure projects. So like if you're familiar with uh, Booth Center or Loomis Park, a lot of the work that's happened out there, especially the beautiful new Loomis Park additions and changes, that was funded from some of those federal grants that we manage. Some new construction projects and some home rehabilitation projects. Uh, Habitat for Humanity, some of the homes that you might see just over by the YMCA uh, off Franklin Street. Those are funded with some federal grant programs that we administer. Um, and then, of course, state grants through MISHTA, the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, other federal grant money um, from the American Rescue Plan Act, other federal and state grants on top of that. So we receive them, we apply for them, and then we find the best way to use those funds to the maximum capacity. So you would think, oh, this is government money. Why don't they just send it out to uh, every municipality that qualifies? But if they did that, uh, the, the amount of money each each municipality would get would be would be very small. Sure, yeah, and as some municipalities receive more than we do, some of these grants are based on population size or income, uh, low and moderate income, and so the city of Jackson falls into those categories where we are lucky enough to receive at least a certain amount every year. We have to report on it and spend it wisely or it gets taken away, and so uh, we've received those entitlement grants for a number of years, and that, that helps a lot of our community. One of the things I haven't heard about for a long time is uh, community development block grants. Does that still exist? It does, yeah. So we, that's part of our entitlement funds from HUD. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, right now we're using those for the third phase of the uh, Booth Center rehabilitation. We're using those to provide roofs and furnaces and water heaters for, I think right now we have 10 active projects on the board. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're using those for some for some streetscaping improvements like sidewalks and trees and street lights. So we we take those dollars, we come up with a plan every year in the winter months, and then we make sure that not only do we spend them really, really wisely, but that we report back to HUD all the great work that's happening so that when it comes time for those dollars to circle again, we make sure that we're you know we're, we're right at the head of the line. I know we've got um, housing that's a big uh, need in the it community is. and you're dealing with that too there's some programs and opportunities available there are yes i mean i think at this point i don't think i've ever seen the city leverage as many funds as they are now to combat the affordable housing crisis it, and it's you know jackson's not immune to that right it, it's it's attacking you know communities large and small nationwide so you know we're utilizing some of those entitlement funds to help with rehabilitating existing properties we're helping support new construction with work that habitat for humanity is doing what a great partner um, and I'm sure a lot of people have heard, I think you mentioned it with Superintendent Beal, the 100 Homes Program, where mm -hmm. the city is offering down payment assistance for the construction of, of, of 100 new homes in the city. City also, um, there's uh, government housing that we have, like uh, Reed Manor, yes. and that you have your eyes on to replace or repair or Maybe we don't even know yet, but that's that's a, that's something in your future. It is, yeah. Uh, the folks at Jackson Housing Commission just doing great work over there. They uh, received what's called a Choice Neighborhoods grant from HUD mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago, and they've utilized those dollars. It's it's kind of a two part grant. The first phase is about a half a million dollar award, and they use the, that money to research and plan what could be what could be the future for Reed Manor and 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 other you know other publicly supported housing here in Jackson. What's the need? You know, uh, does it need to be for single people, older people, families? 
what's the condition, how can we improve what we have, build new, look for fresh land, all, all that's involved in this planning grant. So the, the team at uh, the Housing Commission uh, has been hard at work at that, and I've gotten to be part of those conversations a little bit, which has been really great. Um, and then I think their goal long term then would be to leverage that research and apply for a much larger pot of funds in the future where they could maybe work to construct new housing, uh, maybe replace housing that is antiquated or not working or rehabilitate what is there, but really come up with a holistic plan and then go after some really big federal dollars. The state uh, recently had uh, grants awarded for replacement of lead water service lines. And I know that's something that we want here in Jackson. Are there opportunities in the future for that? You know, we think so. I'll, I'll be honest, that's not my department. So mm -hmm. that's public works, and they're, they're working really, really hard. I, you know, I was just at a recent city council meeting, and I heard all of the different grants that our public works department is both going after and receiving. And I think our department, as the grant coordinator, I feel like we're going after a lot of grant dollars, but, man, public works is putting me to shame. Mm. the amount of money that they are they are trying to get to really tackle that problem. So they have their own grant coordinator. Uh, they don't, it's not a grant coordinator, but the person in charge of that at Public Works, her name is Chandra Willinger. And Chandra is just, uh, she's a great human, just outstanding. I really love talking to her and, and collaborating with her. And she's really going out with the Public Works team and, and, and getting a lot of those dollars. And so they are working really hard to get as many of those lead lines replaced as quickly as possible. Are there some new areas that you're looking? Obviously the federal and state, uh, that's where you get most of it, but are there things like nonprofits or foundations or uh, competitions that uh, the city might be able to uh, apply for? I think my perspective on that is we're gonna go after any grant dollars we can find that are gonna support the work that our community wants us to do. You know, if, if that's from you know, the state land bank, if that's from uh, the federal government or the state government or local grants, anything that comes across our desk, large or small, we're going to take a look at. And sometimes we won't be eligible or maybe the dollars aren't big enough to work with the programs that we're offering, but anybody can send us ideas and we will research them fully to just see, you know, is there something here that, that we can use? And if so, we're going to go after it pretty hard. So you've got, you're on the lookout for uh, some things that maybe the city's never done mm -hmm. before. Hands down. I think we... We're proud of the history of, of the work that's been done in the community development department and, and, and grant procurement, but we don't pretend to know all the answers. And just because we've always done it this way doesn't mean there's not a better way out there. So mm -hmm. I think our eyes are always wide open to, you know, what's new, what's fresh, what's next. So, we're, you know, we're not thinking right now, we're thinking five and 10 years ahead all the time. Well, you're still uh, involved uh, peripherally with the downtown development authority. I know that's uh, an important area. Uh, and we've, I think, uh, left in good hands to uh, a new director, but what do you feel uh, your role at DDA, how do you feel when you look back? What, what are your prides of accomplishment? Well, I think first, Beth Kuyper, the new executive director, she's just doing a great job. I saw her at, at uh, Fortress Cafe just this morning going to another meeting, and she's just bubbly and, and energetic and meeting with all sorts of people and making some things happen. So I'm excited uh, that the DDA snagged Beth. Uh, you know, I, I, it's hard not to love the summer season with the DDA, right? You get to walk around and do food truck Tuesdays and car shows and street fairs and festivals and shopping events. And you get to be outside. All the public's having a great time. You're right there. You know that you had your hand in that. And I, there, for me, there was never a better feeling than going home at the end of the day mm -hmm. and knowing that we put on these great events that brought thousands of people you know, into downtown Jackson. Corey, this is Meet the... City of Jackson, staff spotlight. So that's your job. We've heard about your job, your role, but now a little bit about uh, Corey Mays. Uh, you've had some changes in your personal life recently. I have. Haven't you? I have. I have. <laughs> I have. A big, I a have. pretty big one. I'm right? having a baby. No. Uh, <laughs> I did. Um, I, my, my, uh, my boys, George and Henry and I, we've been... We've been a, a, a threesome, uh, you know, really strong team for a long time, and we recently welcomed a new member of the family, got married back in September to my beautiful wife, Lindsay. I don't know, I don't know why she puts up with the three of us sometimes. We're, we're yeah. pretty loud and crazy men, but uh, she, she keeps us grounded, and, and she makes sure there's always food on the table, which is probably a good thing. Nice. Well, congratulations. And you. uh, your boys, uh, how old are they? They are 10 and, uh, 10 and 12 going on. 25 and 35, just yes. amazing young men that are growing up far faster than I think I'm ready for.
Yeah, and they're well known in the neighborhood. Uh, you, you live in uh, my son Andy's neighborhood. You do. And, uh, they've become fast friends with uh, Andy's daughter Ella, and, uh, and it's a very active uh, family neighborhood you're in. You know, I, I think we were we moved into the neighborhood almost two years ago now, and just really fortunate. The block is filled with kids, filled with amazing families, and just there's always something going on. There's always a party or a game or a contest, and there's always a gaggle of kids in my kitchen. The pantry is generally empty. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I can't think of a I can't think of a better neighborhood to raise my family in. All right, Are you ready for Christmas? <sighs> I'm not done shopping. I have uh. to do some work today. But I love Christmas. December is my favorite month of the year. You know, we go out and get the real tree and hang more lights every year, and probably far too many presents being hidden mm -hmm. in closets. Or for me, I have to hide my presents at work because my boys snoop. Sure. I have everything shipped here, so uh, I, I I can't wait. I'd, my favorite time of the year. Uh, city staff is working to support uh, family. I think this is something that happens uh, every year. Lur Schlechte typically uh, does the uh, the rounding up and all the uh, fund and item raising. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I, I think it's a really great thing we do. Uh, the city has a staff Christmas party every year. It's actually this Friday uh, mm -hmm. at the uh, MLK Center. And uh, every year there's a, a silent auction. There's baskets that are, that are put forth. Every department kind of donates items and puts together items. And you always try to outdo the other one, right? So I was looking at the community development basket just the other day. I mean, there's probably 20 items in there worth hundreds of dollars. It's beautiful. And so city staff bid on these baskets um, and these prizes that are donated or brought in. I know Laura Dreyer Schlecht is a huge help in that as well. Thanks, Laura. And uh, then all the money that's raised is donated to a family that is uh, selected by what's called the Good Times team at the city of Jackson. It's a team that's been put together to really build city morale with city staff to really just kind of support our team and, and make working for the city an even, an even better place. Yeah, it's a family with, with some uh, particular needs. And uh, I know uh, over the years, uh, some really great uh, uh, families have been helped by uh, city staff and the community's generosity. So, well, thanks for, to, uh, for that and uh, to everyone involved with that. It's, it's pretty fantastic. I'm pretty proud of our team. Great to see you, Corey. Thanks for uh, coming over. Always great to see you. Thanks so much. Uh, try not to be a stranger. Yes, city staff spotlight, city of Jackson Development Department's grant coordinator, Corey Mays. Uh, next on the